let's look at Jonah. So open your Bibles or click them open, however you want to do that, to, to, to Jonah. <laughs> Jonah's a minor prophet, and so you're going to find him in the Old Testament. And in um, my Bible, Jonah is on page um, 925. Because what we're going to see here is another rebellion. Remember, our focus for this month is, what does God do in the middle of our rebellion? Okay, so um, most of you are pretty familiar with Jonah because there's another part in the story, and it usually takes the focal part, Jonah and the whale, whale big fish, all that kind of stuff. See, but we're not going to focus totally on the fish. We're going to talk about the fish a little bit. What we want to do is take a look at what happens when Jonah rebels against God, says no, and what does God do with that rebellion? What, is it, what does he do? I want us to look at how God responds the same way he responded with Cain that we studied last week with grace. Right here. So Jonah, we're going to start off with verse 1. Look what it says. It says, The word of the Lord, this, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up. Go against, or I'm sorry, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their wickedness has confronted me. Verse 3, however, Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid the fare and went down to it to go with them to Tarshish, Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So, um, when, when God gave Jonah a call, he said, I want you, Jonah, to go to Nineveh. The reason why God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh was very simple things. Ready? He wanted Jonah to be at Nineveh. It was important for Jonah to be in Nineveh. Um, he wanted him to go there. So, so, just going there and being there. How does that relate to us? When God is giving us a call... He often says, I want you just to go to this, go somewhere, wherever, wherever, wherever that is for you. It could be going to, for the, for, to another table at school. It could be going to that friend. It could be going to this group. Whatever God, he wants you to go. But then the other part is he wants you to be, which means he wants you to, to exist there. There's a reason for it. Um, there's a, there was a whole lot of prophets <clears throat> that God could have chosen at this time. He chose Jonah, and the word I'm going to use here is appointed. Out of all of the prophets, out of all the people that God could have chosen, he chose Jonah. God said, go, and Jonah said, what rhymes with go? No. no. Thank you. What did he say no to? Why was Jonah, a, why did Jonah say no? But it's, it's not just a, any kind of no, God, I don't think I want to do that. I'd rather do something else. Th- there's a phrase here that's used twice. Leave the presence of God. <clears throat> this is a huge phrase here. Because what, basically what this is is that Jonah is saying, I don't want to be even near you, God. That causes me to ask the question, what was, what was Jonah, what was his purpose in saying no? Why did he say no? Do you guys know anything about the, who the Ninevites are? These were vicious people. Here, here's, here, let me give you a little example of, how, of, of the viciousness that is well known. Punishment in Nineveh. Uh, they would lay you down on the ground, and they would have a sled. They would make a sled uh, out of wood, so there'd be planks of wood here. And in the bottom of the wood, they'd embed glass, metal, rocks, pieces of just, just chunks of stuff on the bottom. Tie the sled to a horse, and they'd run you over of the sled. <clears throat> that was punishment for, 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 for it, one of the punishments they had in Nineveh. These were some vicious, vicious people. And they would often go and they would, they would attack other, other neighboring tribes and other neighboring, neighboring kingdoms. They were vicious. So was, Nineveh, so was Jonah afraid of what would happen to him in Nineveh? Possibly. Was he afraid of the journey? Because it was kind of a far distance from one place to another, and you had to walk or go by camel. There was no, there was no plane or car. So was he afraid of the journey? Possibly. Um, but we're going to see something here later on in the story where, um, where we see why Jonah dis- was, was so dead set against going to Nineveh. 
let's, let's turn right there. Let's go to chapter 4. And I'm jumping ahead of myself for a reason because I want you to see... I want you to see why Jonah left. Jonah was greatly displeased and became furious. Now, we've talked about that word furious before last week. As a matter of fact, it's the same exact Hebrew word that's being used here that was used for Cain's anger. We're talking about that deep, seething, hot, uh, burning anger. And so Jonah is as furious as Cain was. Why was Jonah furious? Check this out. He prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, isn't this what I said while I was still in my own country? Let me jump. What's going on? Uh, Jonah goes over to Nineveh, and he preaches, and and they repent, which means that they they turn their face and they turn back to the Lord. So they do what, they respond the way that God wanted them to do. Why is Jonah mad about that? Look what it says. He says, Isn't this what I said while I was still in my own country? That's why I fled towards Tarshish in the first place. Ready for this? He says, I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to become angry, rich in faithful love, and one who relents from sending disaster. Now, is is that true about God? Is God all those things? Here's the question. Why is Jonah mad about that? He's, He's mad at God for the very reasons that God says, this is why you should love me, because I'm compassionate, I'm slow to anger. But Jonah is mad, not just mad, but seething, serious mad. So why, why is this? Why, why are we seeing Jonah in this place where it's just, I, I want to get as far from you, God, as possible, which means away from the one who is most gracious, away from the one who is most loving, away from the one who is slow to anger. This is a crucial thing here. God confronts Noah's rebellion, (coughs) listen to this, you ready? Seven times. Between his first rejection of God to the end of the book, uh, God intervenes in in Jonah's life seven times. Why am I saying seven times? What's important about seven times? Seven times. Seven. Seven, seven, seven. You know what seven is? In Scripture, seven means it's a divine number. It means everything is done, it's complete, it's finished, nothing else to do, seven. So what that means to me is that God intervened with Jonah exactly the amount of times he needed to, to to get his message out. How did he do this? Well, he he did it four times one way, three times the other way. Four times. The four times he intervened into Jonah's life was he appointed things. What was the first thing that he appointed? He appointed a big fish. Look over in chapter 1, verse 17. So there's a storm. He gets in the ship to go to Tarshish, and there's some guys in the ship. There's a storm, and they're afraid, and they're like, who's, who's the cause of the storm, which is a typical belief back then. Somebody must have caused the storm. And so they figured out that it's Jonah. Jonah says, you know what? It's me. Here's the thing you do. Throw me overboard, and it'll all go well with you. And they're like, dude, we don't want to do that. No way. We're not going to throw you overboard. So the, the sailors are like, okay, we're going to row our, fat, row our best back to shore. It doesn't work. The only solution they have is to throw Jonah overboard. They throw him overboard. If you guys are picturing VeggieTales, please stop. <laughs> right? So they throw Jonah overboard, and so they throw him overboard. Now look what it says. It says, verse 17, Now the Lord had appointed a huge fish to swallow Jonah. Again, here's this word appointed. That's another Hebrew word. I want to kind of, kind of rest here for a second, because this is, this is again, um, out of all the things God had on his, on his choices, on his list to do, he said, I'm going to take this fish and put it here. Do you see what I just did? I'm going to take this fish that needs to go over here, and I'm going to put it here because it needs to be right here. Appointed means picked out for a certain task to do. It's to select. It's an accounting term in Hebrew. So so God says, I'm going to take this fish, I'm going to put it over here and appoint it to be in this exact place where Jonah's going to be so so that Jonah can be swallowed by this whale. I want this to happen. Now, a lot of times we think that that was, that was punishment. That was God's punishment to Jonah. But let me, let me introduce a new, a new phrase to you. That was God's grace given to Jonah. Because while inside the whale, Jonah says a prayer. And it's in verse 2. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, chapter 2. 
Um, well, the, the very first thing he says, I call to the Lord in my distress. No kidding, right? You're in the, you're in the belly of this fish, right? Um, and so looking over in this prayer, look over in verse 8. It says, those who cling to worthless idols forsake faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the only thing he's got. I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. That's all he's got. A voice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill what I have vowed, salvation from the Lord. And I love this. The visual picture in verse, in verse, verse 10 is, is, is fantastic. Um, then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. <clears throat> Three days in the belly, and he gets vomited out. He's out of the fish now. He walks over to, to Nineveh. He preaches. They repent. He gets angry about it. He gets angry at God for giving them a second chance because this is what the deal is for Jonah. Jonah's upset because he feels like his people, the, the Jews, deserve to have the, a chance for repentance, not Nineveh. Those guys over there are way far gone. Too far gone for you, God. That's it. You shouldn't be giving them a second chance. That was the big deal. That's why Jonah was mad at God. So then, what does God do? He, he intervenes with another appointed thing. He, uh, look at um, verse 6 of chapter 4. It says, Then the Lord God appointed a plant, which means now I want this. Out of all the things I have, I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it over here where Jonah is. It, for this, I want it to be right here, right where Jonah is going to sit, so it will grow. So it grows. The Lord appointed a plant, and it grew up to provide shelter over Jonah's head to ease his discomfort. Grace, right? The next thing that God appoints is a worm. It's in verse 7. When the dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm, out of all these things, a worm to attack the plant, and it withered and died. Then look at verse 8. As the sun was setting, God appointed a scorching east wind. The sun beat down on Jonah's, so much, on Jonah's head that he almost fainted and he wanted to die. So he pointed four things, a fish, a plant, a worm, the wind. Now, at the very beginning, I just told you that God appointed Jonah. God called Jonah. I want you to go over here. Jonah said no. So you know what he did? He says, I'm going to point some, some other things for Jonah to turn Jonah around. First thing I'm going to point, I'm going to point to fish and call a fish to come over here. Then I'm going to call a plant to come over here. Then I'm going to call a worm to come over here. Then I'm going to call a, a wind to come over here because I want Jonah to, to stop. I want Jonah to, to, to stop. I said that Jonah did appointed four things and then he, he did something else. He uh, addressed Jonah three times. What does God do? Look at chapter 3. Verse 1, after the vomiting happened, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh, and preach the message that I tell you. Verse 3, then we see Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's command. And they repent, they turn, and, and Jonah gets angry about it. What does God do with Jonah's anger? It's exactly the same thing that he did with Cain. Look what he does. Verse 4 again, or chapter 4, verse 1 again. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became furious. Verse 4, look what God says to Jonah. Same thing he says to Cain. The Lord asked, is it, is it right for you to be angry? It's the exact same. And, and the picture for me is exactly the same as it was with Cain. Here's, here's Jonah, and he's sitting there, and he's having his little temper tantrum. And, and God says, hey, Jonah, I, I, I need you to be where I want you to be. And right now, I'm here with you, and I'm asking you this question. Is it right for you to be angry? Now, why would God want to address a rebellion like that? Now, he, like I said with Cain, he could have done it any other way. He could have said, Jonah, just do what I say. Just, just do what I say and you'll be fine. But instead, he addresses Jonah's anger. Same exact way. Is he looking for information? No. 
He's asking Jonah to evaluate himself. There really is nothing for you to say to be angry about Jonah because I'm right here. And now in chapter 4, verse 9, uh, God asks Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? The plant grew and it died and Jonah gets all upset about this plant. You know what Jonah says? Look what it says. Yes, he replied. Um, it is right. I am angry enough to die. So the Lord said, You cared about the plant, which you did not labor over and it did not grow. It appeared in a night and perished in a night. Should I not care about the great city of Nineveh, which has more than 120,000 people who cannot distinguish between their right and their left, and as well as many animals? What he's basically saying is, Jonah, what I want you to do is I want you to care about what I care about. Care about what I care about. So he addresses, he, he, he appoints four things to stop Jonah, and he addresses uh, Jonah three times in, in a way that says, stop being angry and, and, be, and care about what I care about. Now here's the frustrating part about Jonah. It ends right there. There's nothing else to it. There's a whole lot of questions that I want to have, like, well, how did, how did Jonah respond? How did, how did uh, Nineveh respond? How far, what, what happened today? It was like a, it just ends. What looks like it's the end, he says, I've done everything. I've completed it. Seven times I've intervened. The, none, n- not one of us here can avoid the purpose of this message. Here's, here's the purpose. is to say, God appoints who he appoints. And he says, I want you, Jonah, to be over here. And I want you to care about what I care about. What is it that we should be caring about? 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. There are two things that we cannot avoid. Calling number one, everybody on the planet is called to believe in Jesus. It's right there. Everyone on the planet is called to believe in Jesus. Now you can rebel against that, it's possible to rebel against that. But what's God going to do in that rebellion? He's going to keep on pursuing. Second thing, it's in the same verse. The command, the calling, is to love each other. 